Welcome to the Armani Talks YouTube channel. I'm your host, Armani Talks. In this channel, we are breaking down the art and science of communication skills. And what better way to do that than learning the most pure form of communication out there, storytelling. In this episode, we're going to be breaking down seven different resources on where you can learn storytelling. And you want to watch till the end because number seven is hands down the most important. Before we break down these seven, let's just make sure we understand what a story is. A story, the basic fundamentals is that it's broken down into a pyramid. And the pyramid has three different layers. Layer one is the most important. If your layer one understanding is weak, the whole pyramid topples down. We don't want that. Layer one states that a story is a series of ideas. How are these ideas formed, Armani? Don't worry about that yet. Just understand that all stories are a series of ideas. That's layer one. Layer two is when we start to understand how to structure these ideas. One of the most common ways to structure an idea in a series of ideas is with the traditional character conflict lesson format. But this is optional. This is layer two. All stories don't hypothetically need a conflict. Imagine you're talking to your coworker and you're telling them how you got promoted. That could be a simple story with a series of ideas that just has a character and a lesson, that's it. So layer two is where creativity is involved in structuring these ideas. And layer three, this is where most people jump into from the get-go, but this is how your ideas are expressed. The medium, are you telling your story in terms of a YouTube video? Are you telling it in terms of photography, known as visual storytelling? Are you telling it in words? What is the top of your pyramid? Great storytellers, we work from bottom up. Shitty storytellers start from top down. We don't want that. Start from bottom up. Just keep reiterating the concept that all stories are a series of ideas. And once you can start meditating on this and learning about this, these other seven resources are going to take up a brand new life. Do you understand the fundamentals? Great. So let's get started off with the first resource on where to learn storytelling, advertisements. All advertisements follow this simple framework of the pyramid. And what we'll traditionally notice is that these advertisements, commercials, are trying to sell us a story. When I was growing up, one of the most popular commercials out there was with Taco Bell and the little Chihuahua dog. For some reason, I resonated with this Chihuahua. I like this Chihuahua. We called them him the Taco Bell dog. On the flip side, McDonald's was rolling with Ronald McDonald. And personally, I don't like clowns. But what are both of these franchises commercials, advertisements, trying to showcase to you. A story. They're giving you a character. They're giving you a conflict, which is, are you hungry? And a lesson is, how about you come eat with us? They're trying to get you to take an action. Most companies spend millions of dollars to formulate their stories so you take action. Code for, give them your money. So this is one of the best resources to learn storytelling from. Rather than skipping those advertisements, rather than taking a commercial break, watch those advertisements, watch those commercial breaks, and you'll start to solidify your understanding of the simple pyramid. Number two is to learn from comedians. Traditionally, when we are watching comedians, we're mainly watching them with the intent to laugh. We just wanna flip our paradigm just a little bit more to not only laugh, but to truly observe their lead up to the laugh. How are they making you laugh? They're telling you stories. They're telling you moments from their life that they find to be out of norm. And they wrap it in a hilarious sort of tonality, a buildup to ultimately get you to take an action, which is to laugh. This isn't to say that you need to break down every single comedy film with your intellect. Instead, just get the general vibe. Just be a little bit more aware 
of the lead up before you laugh. And as you laugh, wait for the next build up till you laugh again. So this is a great resource to learn storytelling from. And it's comedians. They're just funny storytellers. The third one are politicians. Politicians, they're trying to get you to take some sort of action. Did you notice with all three that we've mentioned thus far, they're trying to get you to take some action? Taco Bell dog, Ronald McDonald, they want your money. The comedians, they want your laughs. And the politicians, they want your support. With these politicians, they're also trying to sell you some sort of narrative. What is that narrative? How are they building up this narrative? Are they mainly playing off of hope? Are they mainly playing off of fear? Are they combining the two? Which other characters are they introducing into the story for them to win over your vote, your support, for you to vibe with their idea? All this stuff, if you analyze it closely, follows that simple pyramid of series of ideas, structuring the ideas in unique ways, and delivering it on a medium. Okay, so politicians are an extremely important resource to learn storytelling from. That's number three. Four, this one's going to be personal to you, and this is what I called the wow factor. What is a wow factor? Wow factor is something about you that you consume that other people would have no clue about. Can you give me an example, Armani? Sure. In terms of my life, I have three wow factors. Things that most people don't know about me, or if they do know me well, they'd be surprised that I enjoy watching these sort of content. I love watching battle rap, I love watching cooking videos, and I love watching prank videos. These are just stuff that I enjoy watching. Let's say I'm having a productive day, I don't know what to watch on TV, my mind will just drift off to these three for some strange reason. We all have personal wow factors. This isn't to say that you should also watch battle rap, cooking videos, and prank videos. But why is a wow factor important? A wow factor is important because it keeps your storytelling unpredictable. And as you start consuming stories, you start understanding that you can learn stories from everywhere. Armani, are you trying to make the ridiculous statement that you learn storytelling from a prank videos, battle rap, a cooking videos? As a matter of fact, I do. With battle rap, I start to understand wordplay. I start to understand how these two different battle rappers are using words to get a reaction out of the audience and to break down their opponent. With cooking videos, I start to adopt a let's see where this takes me mentality. Because with a lot of cooking videos, they introduce a lot of random ingredients and they start mixing and matching it in a certain way where I have no clue what they're trying to do. So I'm forced to watch it all the way till the end until I see what they're making. This reminds me of a story because it's in some ways a lead up to a story, but instead of telling you a story, they're just doing it with ingredients. With prank videos, I noticed that the person that is being pranked, they're sold on the story that the pranker is trying to sell them on. And what I start to understand is that momentarily, at this point, this pranker is doing mind control on the person that is being pranked by selling them on a story. So all these different wow factors uh, over time started to develop into a form of storytelling. So what you just want to do is be a little bit more aware of what you watch, which your mind naturally drifts off to. And rather than just calling it mental junk food, Realize that you could learn storytelling from it down the line, even though you don't know how yet. The fifth method is through fiction books. I call fiction books the placebo effect for the mind. If you tell someone who's sick in certain situations that this sugar pill will cure their sickness, and they see that the sugar pill is being delivered by a person of high authority, and they truly believe that this sugar pill is a form of medicine, they'll be sold on the narrative. And their belief is so strong that it influences their physiology. 
I call fiction books the placebo effect for the mind because it gives you altered beliefs regarding your imagination. When I read Harry Potter, I know in the real world that there's not going to be a situation where uh, some dorky looking guy with uh, a lightning rod a scar is going to be riding a broom in front of me, Harry Potter. I know that's not going to happen in the real world, but the beauty about the imagination is that it could still envision it. It's giving my imagination a placebo as to seeing, hey, quit playing so safe. Quit only following the rules out there and follow the rules in here. And when you have that extra flexibility in your imagination, you become more bold in your ideas. You're able to not only introduce ideas, but cross combine it in a different way because your imagination is stronger than someone who's a little too robotic. Okay, so that's why fiction books are extremely powerful. The sixth one is sports. Sports, what is it, honestly? It's a game, of course, but there's a whole story behind sports. It gives you a certain form of experience. And great uh, entertainers are also great sportsmen. Sportsmen are great entertainers as well. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, he sold a lot of people as him being the villain. A pretty boy Floyd, money Mayweather. He's creating a character so others can hate him. He's one of the most despised athletes during his time in boxing. But he liked that because he understood that even casual boxing fans would come to watch him hopefully lose. He was able to sell them on a story. Another example was a couple of years ago where Golden State Warriors in the NBA were this top tier team. And randomly, all these Golden State diehard fans came out of nowhere. Sure, there are actual fans of Golden State, but out of nowhere, there were a lot of casual fans who never watched basketball. All of a sudden, Golden State fans were thinking, Man, what the fuck do you know about basketball? They may not know much, but they're sold on the narrative regarding this sports team. So sports is a brilliant place to learn storytelling skills from. That's number six. You stayed until the end. I told you seven was going to be the most important. You want to know what number seven is? You. All six of these that I've mentioned in today's video are leading you back to number seven, which is you. You are already born a storyteller. You have no choice in the matter. Your mind is always envisioning stories. It's accumulating information and it's trying to assign meaning to that information by creating it in sequence. Think about the last time you had road rage and you were pissed and you were creating a narrative for this individual that cut you off. Picture those times when you're dreaming and when you wake up, you felt as though it was extremely real. Why did it feel so real? Because you were going through a story. Picture times when, let's say you're gossiping or hearing about gossip, what's happening? Your mind is being attracted and processing information through stories. The problem is that a lot of the storytelling that we do happens unconsciously. We're not aware of it. Our goal as proper communicators is to understand that we need to consciously control the narrative because we have no choice in the matter. The mind is processing through stories. So these six that I've given you, and there's many more other places to learn storytelling, is to help you discover number seven, which is to say that you already, your experiences, your past, your desires for the future, it's all happening in a storytelling level. All you need to do is bring conscious awareness of it. Armani, you're telling me I'm already the perfect storyteller? I don't feel like it. It's sort of like a plate that's extremely dirty. We understand that the plate naturally is not dirty, but it looks dirty temporarily, which means that we need to keep removing the dirt. We need to remove the limiting beliefs on saying that we're not storytellers by constantly telling stories with our awareness in charge. Constantly look out for stories in the external world. The more that you do the six that leads you to the seven, the more that the seven, you, you're going to be able to process stories in a completely different paradigm from here on out. 
Michelangelo, when he was asked, how do you design such beautiful sculptures from these plain tablets or these plain uh, tablets? Yeah. He says that I see the perfect entity already existing behind this tablet and I just remove off the junk. That was his method. One of the greatest artists of all time says that he already sees the statue existing and he needs to burn off the rest. He needs to chip away the rest. So realize that you are already a great storyteller and you remove the limiting beliefs by telling more stories in any medium of your choice. If today's video helped you and you learned a thing or two, be sure to drop that like for me right down below and you share this video in your social media of choice. Thank you for joining the Armani Talks YouTube channel and I'll catch you on the next episode.